5.4 is the second of two labor markets that we looked at. The first yesterday was perfectly competitive, which we saw there was one wage in the market that all workers earn. And then, of course, they're going to hire labor based on that intersection of MRC and MRP. The second of the labor markets is a monopsony. So what a monopsony is, is ultimately a monopoly in a labor market. And so a really good example of this is let's say you have a hospital in an extremely rural area and you are a nurse or a doctor or something along those lines where there's really not another available <coughs> excuse me, option for employment unless you're driving like an hour or whatever. And so locally that is the main option. And so they've got control over the local market for that profession. Um, if you look back historically, like coal mining towns were kind of the same way that you know there was one employer. And so that employer had a lot of control over that labor market and what they paid them. And so that's what we're getting into, that there's instead of one producer in the product market having control, now there's one employer in the labor market that has control. So there's one firm hiring workers. Um, workers are relatively mobile, meaning they can't go find these other jobs or it's not easy to find other jobs. The firm is a wage maker, so ultimately they get to set the wages that they are going to pay the workers. And then gives you some examples, Central American sweatshops, you know, small rural areas with one big producer, NCAA, that's an interesting one to look at. Um, so if you want to pay, play high level college athletics, you've essentially got one employer. You have to go through the NCAA. And now it's really changing with all of the NIL and stuff like that that's going on with actually getting paid to be a college athlete. So it's actually gotten a lot more interesting as far as you are an employee to NCAA. But anyways, it's kind of how all this works. So it says, assume that the firm can't wait to discriminate and they're going to pay all the workers the same wage. But in order to attract new labor, they're going to have to raise the wage that they're going to pay. So kind of like product markets had to lower the price in order to attract new customers, now they're going to have to raise the wage in order to attract new employees. So if we pay at $4, no one wants to work. <coughs> at $4.50, one person wants to work. Well, in order to attract a second worker, we're going to have to pay both workers $5. And so what we see is kind of like we had a separated demand and marginal revenue curve for monopolies. Now we have a separated MRC curve and wage curve. So the one worker gets $4.50. When we hire this second worker at $5, we can't pay the second one $5 and keep paying the first one $4.50 because that's wage discrimination and that's really not legal. So in order to make things fair, we have to essentially give this person a 50 cents raise. So even though the wage went to $5, the marginal resource cost of hiring the second worker was a dollar because we have to pay a dollar more even though the wage only went up 50 cents. Does that make sense? Because we got to pay them both. So we had to give the other one a raise in order to hire the second one. Same thing here. If we want to attract a third worker, we got to raise the wage to 550. But in order to attract or make everything equitable. Can I have your attention, please? Teachers, that please release all students attending the Ready to Work field trip. And students who are going on the ready to work field trip, please report to the back of the school to board the bus. It will be leaving shortly. Thank you. Y'all are ready to learn about monopsonies. Ah, but anyways, <laughs> you hire the third worker, the wage goes from five to five fifty, but the marginal resource cost once again goes up higher because you've got to compensate and pay those previous workers the same. So because of that, and then out here you can see this is your total resource cost. Sometimes this helps too that for one worker you pay four fifty, for two workers you gotta pay ten dollars, for three workers you're paying sixteen fifty. Where so, did five fifty come from? So that is the fifty cent raise you gave well, the fifty cents extra you had to pay this person to come to work and then the fifty cent raise. And so there was a dollar increase. Well your marginal resource cost was five fifty because of having given both people fifty cents more. And so marginal resource costs went up a dollar in order to, so, or really it's the five dollars to pay the second worker plus the 50 cent raise you had to give that first worker as well as 550. And so this is the 550 you had to pay that worker plus an extra dollar because you had to give them 50 more cents and them 50 more cents. 
And so you're just tacking on what you have to pay the new worker plus what you have to increase the previous worker's wage in order to be equitable and not illegal. So because of that, the MRC is greater than the supply of labor. And so uh, I want to use this one. So we know that we are going to hire quantity two because we're always going to hire labor where MRC equals MRP. But with a monopoly, we're, or sorry, monopsony, we're going to pay them here. And so kind of like with a monopoly that we charged a higher price than what we really had to at equilibrium, now we're going to pay a lower wage essentially because we're the only employer and you can kind of do what you want. That's the wage making concept of this. That they're going to pay here, which is relative to what you, the individual, is willing to supply your labor for. Because remember, this represents all of the workers and the different wages they're willing to supply that labor for. So even though we could pay them here, we're going to pay them here because this is what they're willing to work for. So the wage is $9, and we're going to hire whatever quantity two is for employees. Monopsony up top, monopoly down left. And so it's basically the same thing, but instead of producing products and having one producer control the market, now we're hiring workers, and we have one hiring firm controlling the labor market. And so it's the reason demand and marginal revenue are not the same, and the reason that supply and MRC, or why MRC is greater than supply. Because remember, this is what we're going to pay them, and then as we increase those wages to attract new workers, that's why that MRC is greater than the spot because we're not just equaling the wage like we did in perfect competition where wage and MRC were the same or supply and MRC were the same. Now because we have to increase and get people raises, that's why it's higher than the wage we're actually going to pay. How do we feel about that? Good. Great. Okay. I think so. It's a monopoly, but instead of producing products, you're, yes, it's literally upside down. Some teachers do this. Monopsony, monopoly. Monopsony, monopoly. Technically, it's like. Yeah. Anyways, you get my point. Um, this would just be how they put it on the test. So, if a firm employs only labor and capital in its production process, it says which of the following best describes the optimal combination of inputs for the firm in the long run? So the marginal product per dollar spent on labor is equal to the marginal product per dollar spent on capital. But that's just basically. MRC equals MRP. Just saying you want those two things to equal each other as far as what you get in revenue and then what you actually have to pay 